Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic, the non-motor symptoms and motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease the non-motor manifestations and motor manifestations of Parkinson's disease. Actually, we are all familiar with the motor manifestations of Parkinson's disease, the tremor, rigidity, akinesia and postural disturbances. But the non-motor symptoms predate the Parkinson's motor symptoms by few years. And therefore, if we can pick up the non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease and initiate treatment at the earliest, the disease can be to some extent managed and controlled and therefore looking for these non-motor symptoms and picking up early so that an early initiation of treatment of Parkinson's disease can be done so as to at least slow down the progression of Parkinson's disease. So we should always suspect the non-motor manifestations of Parkinson's disease. So what are all the non-motor manifestations of Parkinson's disease? We all know that the Parkinson's disease is caused by the deficiency of dopamine in substantia nigra. And substantia nigra has got connections to basal ganglia and nucleus accumbens. The basal ganglia is connected to the frontal lobe for the executive functions and thinking process. And basal ganglia is responsible for movements and therefore they have hypokinesia. The frontal lobes are affected, executive function is affected. It also has connections with nucleus acumen and therefore the behavior gets affected, especially hallucinations and impulse control behavior, especially patients who are dopamine agonists, pramipexor and ropinerol. So how do we pick up these non-motor manifestations? According to the Brock staging, according to the Brock staging, the Lewy body pathology is, is seen well before it is it, it affects the basal ganglia and presence with the motor manifestations. It affects certain structures well before it affects the other parts and, and causing motor manifestations. So according to the box staging, the Lewy body's pathology begins in the brain stem. It begins in the brainstem, that is the lower brainstem, where there is dorsal motor nucleus of vagus involvement. So they have problems with the GIT. It, uh, it begins in olfactory system, so they'll have anosmia. It begins in the autonomic nervous system, and therefore they'll have autonomic disturbances in the form of postural hypotension uh, and other autonomic manifestations. So basically, according to the box staging, According to the Brock staging, the Lewy body pathology begins in the autonomic nervous system, olfactory system and dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus, that is the lower brain stem. So if we can pick up these manifestations, that is the postural hypotension or other manifestations of the autonomic nervous system or the anosmia or the GIT disturbances, we are picking up the Parkinson's disease very early and we can initiate treatment. So once this lower system gets affected, then it spreads to the upper brain stem and the cerebral hemispheres. So picking up these non-motor manifestations is going to be of prime importance. So what are all the non-motor manifestations? It can be divided into cognitive impairment, sleep disturbances, autonomic nervous system disturbances, olfactory disturbances in the form of anosmia and finally the sensory disturbances in the form of pain. So basically we have five types of non-motor manifestations of Parkinson's disease. One, the cognitive impairment. Second, the sleep disturbances. Third, the autonomic nervous system, system disturbances, olfactory system disturbances, and a sensory disturbance in the form of pain. Now, let's see one by one of these five components. First, the cognitive impairment. It is very well seen in, in Parkinson's disease. One of the important non-motor manifestations of Parkinson's disease. Cognitive dysfunction is seen in as much as 90%. They present with dementia, loss of memory. But then there's an important difference between the memory loss of Alzheimer's dementia and memory loss of Parkinson's disease. In Alzheimer's dementia, encoding itself is in the first place 
affected it becomes ineffective so they cannot even encode they cannot even register so the encoding or the memory getting into the memory system itself gets affected in alzheimer's dementia whereas in parkinson disease they are able to get in the information they are able to store the information but they are not able to retrieve the memory so in parkinson disease they are able to encode and maintain it consolidate but they are not able to retrieve the memory very important difference between the memory impairment of alzheimer's dementia and parkinson's disease second the cognitive impairment will be of fluctuation attention because of fluctuating acetylcholine levels and they can have apathy they can have sadness then they can have depression as i said the frontal lobes get affected so they have executive dysfunction they have dysfunction problem solving decision making they have visual spatial dysfunction so that their depth perception is affected so they go and uh, and hit and bang on things which comes their way they have visual hallucinations especially in persons who are taking dopamine agonist like ropinirol and prampexrol they have visual hallucinations and one important side effect of taking dopamine agonist is impulse control behavior impulse control behavior they have problems with gambling they indulge too much in gambling they indulge too much in sexual activity and pornography this is all about the cognitive dysfunction the non motor manifestation of parkinson disease then they have sleep disturbances there are two important sleep disturbances one they have sleep attacks so they fall asleep easily they have daytime sleepiness second very important and characteristic in fact if we can pick up this we can predict that these persons are are in for trouble and they are going to have parkinson disease in future and can initiate treatment that is rem sleep behavior disorder generally we have two types of sleep one the non rem second the rem in the rem that is rapid eye movement phase we have the rapid eye movements and then we dream during that particular phase and therefore nature has given a wonderful protection in the form in the form having total paralysis of the body atonia of the body and therefore though we have violent dreams we cannot enact our dreams because there is paralysis and atonia of the limbs in normal persons but in persons who are likely to develop parkinson's disease they have rem sleep behavior disorders and therefore when they dream there is no paralysis or atonia of the limbs and they enact the dreams so enactment of the dreams that is rem sleep behavior disorder is one of the early non motor manifestations of parkinson's disease and therefore we have to pick it up the other or the other component which gets affected is the autonomic nervous system so they'll have uh, disturbances in in maintaining the blood pressure they have orthostatic hypotension they have gat disturbances constipation is very very important most of the parkinson's patients suffer from constipation then they have genito urinary disturbances in having increased frequency of the urine then they can have sexual dysfunction also the rem sleep behavior disorder anosmia and constipation are almost very specific to the non motor manifestations of the parkinson disease and therefore when you see these triad the anosmia the constipation the rem sleep behavior disorder we should always suspect that they are probably having the non motor manifestations of parkinson disease and eventually they may develop motor manifestations of parkinson disease and hence we should initiate the treatment at the earliest the other system which gets affected as i said is the olfactory system they present as anosmia loss of smell is one of the early manifestations of a neurodegenerative disease it is parkinson's which they are likely to develop in future then they have sensory disturbances in the form of pain so these are all the non motor manifestations i repeat it is very important because after the presentation of non motor manifestation it takes few years for them to develop the motor manifestations of parkinson's disease it is then most of the doctors pick up and initiate treatment but if you are able to pick up the non motor manifestations we are picking up the parkinson's disease very early and we initiate treatment and therefore we are able to retard the progression of the disease so picking up non motor manifestations of parkinson's disease and treating it managing it is very very important the motor manifestations which appears after few years of the development of the non motor manifestations are are for some easy to remember is by mnemonic trap t r a p t is for tremors they'll have pill rolling movement resting tremor r for rigidity they have lead pipe rigidity with superimposed tremor what we call as cogwheel rigidity a for akinesia or hypokinesia p for postural disturbances 
which these are the motor system of parkinson's disease which develop after few years of the person having non motor manifestations of parkinson's disease hence if you have a good knowledge of the non motor manifestations and ma motor manifestation of parkinson's disease we can manage parkinson's disease very very effectively i hope you have understood listening to my lecture if you have any suggestions or comments kindly post on to my youtube channel but please like and subscribe my youtube channel dr sinhas medical concepts and my fb page dr sinhas concepts thank you bye